morning. What's up, Facebook? What's up, loved ones? It is a beautiful new day. Beautiful new day. And I'm really excited to talk to you this morning. Those of you who saw me put up a video last night saw a little bit of tears and a little bit of just distress, you know, after watching Cowspiracy. And man, like, isn't that why we look away from stuff like that? Like, we don't want to feel those feelings like of overwhelming doom and suffering in the world, right? Like, I get it. I get it. But man, as somebody who has lived through a lot of suffering in life and worked through a lot of false beliefs about why that happened repeatedly in my life and come to this place of complete accountability for all the shit that I drew in to my life repeatedly over and over again. Literally me attracting it to me. In fact, I am so good, so talented at dealing with traumatic situations and chaos and rebuilding that for a long time in my life, I unconsciously created scenarios where I could thrive. And I thrived mostly in scenarios where I was challenged, right? Like stressful times is when this instinctual clarity comes into me and I know what to do, when to do it. I don't have any time to doubt myself or figure anything. I just know a hundred steps ahead. Boom, boom, boom. That's how I work. That's why I've always been good in competitions or anything like that, right? Because I have that gift in me. And it's it's a gift that I was born with, a gift that I chose. So in this portion of my life, I've come to know great truths about that and that I don't need to be in such a low place to be inspired to climb higher. In fact, I live with this level of accountability and I know where true change takes place. So when I look at things that are going on bad in the world, I can go to sleep praying on it and literally wake up with the next day being a new day. And I've actually had friends who, and no, it, it wasn't offensive, but who could ask me like, how can you not take a side? How can you not do this? How can you not do that? And I get it. When we look at things that are going on in the world, man, we're like, first, we have to have the courage to look. Then once we look and are moved emotionally by what's taking place, then we're driven to action. But if we're still living outside in versus inside out, that action becomes us taking to fight, fighting the good fight that we have been inspired to fight, right? Man, I was a fighter most of my life. So I know all about that, lived out that scenario multiple times and discovered all it did was create these repeat cycles. Cycles that us as humanity have continued to create. And what I'm talking about is suffering for the sake of suffering and putting that energy into the world. Self-fulfilling prophecies. Thoughts are beautiful, brilliant, creative things. Every thought that we think is the beginning of, of creating something. Chronic thoughts that we think repeatedly, we're constantly putting that energy into the world. We are creating that which we fear, right? Then we go to battle with the world and say, you were wrong, we have to change. Just because we just woke up and realized we had to change, stay there a little while. That's what I've learned. I stay there a little while and work on changing myself. And through that change and that healing process, I've come to learn that it isn't me yelling, this needs to change. I don't, that's not what changes the world. Not my world, not your world, not our world. It is through me acknowledging what needs to be changed, saying this is not right, and then changing it within myself, going to work, not fighting. There's no fighting. Fighting creates more fighting. Going to work on creating these changes within myself, and all change takes work, right? But something miraculous happens when we do the work within ourselves. my breakfast match my outfit. Something miraculous happens when we do the change within ourselves. We move from suffering for the sake of suffering and pointing out what's wrong to being what's right to doing our part. And we put that energy into the world. That energy goes out into the world and then we begin to exemplify that energy in our words and in our actions. It begins with our thoughts and that inner work. And that's living inside out. 
Because truly, as inside, as outside, as below, as above, it's all connected, right? So if I live outside in, I'm letting the world tell me my state of being, and then I'm yelling, screaming to the world, this is wrong, somebody fix it. No. If I'm living inside out, I go, oh wow, there's some stuff going on here in the world. What in me can be changed to help fix this? What in me can be changed? How can I do my part? I've been shown something that I can change, that's within me to change, and I'm ready to change that. And all I need to do is do that work to change what in me is ready to change and then share and promote that transformation, that sh promote what you love. Have you guys ever heard that? Don't bash with Jay. Promote what you love. Promote what you love. So in matters of, you know, whether we're eating meat or whether we're fighting people or whatever, it's like what in me needs to be changed? I can easily say I don't eat meat. I was already not eating meat before I watched that documentary last night. I haven't eaten meat in two months. And I haven't been talking about it publicly because that is my journey that I'm working on. And spirit has called me to no longer eat what I now know to be a part of me. To what I now know me to be deeply connected to. Every life form on this planet, I am deeply connected to. But I still had some justifications in me about eating fish. You know, and that's okay. I learned something new about that yesterday, so I moved beyond that. You see, this isn't about me telling the world what they should be doing. It's about me doing what feels right in me, what I'm guided to do. So yesterday, when I saw that, I had already not been eating meat. But all of a sudden, this... Fear overtook me. Fear overtook me for my children. When I heard the number 2030 and realized that my granddaughter, who's on her way, will only be 12, fear overtook me. What planet am I leaving for my own children and grandchildren? And I wanted to scream at the world, we need to change this now. Everybody needs to see this. And then I remembered that I was shown this for a reason. So I can continue to do my part my part. This isn't about me judging you or telling you. I was the biggest addict of meat and many other things in my life. Meat is an addiction to me. And it's something that what movie, Cheryl? I watched Cowspiracy. I watched Cowspiracy. My, my girl Sharon watched it. And I was like, oh, I haven't seen that one yet. Woo, did it open up some emotions in me. And it was good because it's good to open up emotions, right? Like it just moved me, and this morning I woke up, it's a new day, a beautiful new day, and I'm excited because there's so much that I can do to affect change in the world simply by doing my changes, doing my changes, not conspiracy, honey, cowspiracy. So today is a new day. So I want you guys to take this, and what area, what area of your life can this apply? Maybe for you, you're not at that place where you're looking at that. What are you trying to change in your life? What are you looking for? What are you seeking change in? And what are you doing to be the change that you want to see? Right? Our thoughts are cr literally creating the world we experience. The way we see the world is the way the world shows up for us. Okay, let's take this. Let's pick a topic. Let's relationships. This is a good one for me, man. It's a really good one. For most of my life, I had a deep belief that I was unlovable and unloved. And I lived with that belief about myself. And I would go through these victim experiences that I had created. I didn't see it that way at the time. <laughs> Not at all. Um, I would go through these victim experiences that I had created and I would be screaming to the world, look at this injustice done to me. Look at how unfairly I've been treated. Look at how wrong this all is. And I, I was screaming to be loved, for somebody to recognize that's not fair. You shouldn't be treated that way and to tell me that. At least I thought I was screaming to be loved. But I was not. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Because these people would show up. Friends and family would show up to love me. And they would join me in my belief that I had been so wrong. But over time, as I repeated this cycle again and again and again, people stopped showing up. <coughs> they did. They stopped showing up. I even had one dear friend. 
we're we're friends again today. It's so good. We never not were. She was. It was a profound moment, right near a part in my life where I was getting really close to my to my awakening, which became my greatest breakdown, my rock bottom. And she said to me, Jojo, being your friend has become draining, and I love you, but I can't I can't be your friend anymore. And I'm gonna give you one gift. You need to know this. Not everybody thinks like you do. And one of the people who I relied on the most through all of my screaming, please love me, walked away from me. And this happened until pretty much everybody was gone and I found myself completely alone, screaming, look how abandoned I am. And it was through being completely alone, a place where I had brought myself through completely setting up these cycles for me to be hurt and abandoned, that I learned that I wasn't yelling to the world, screaming to the world, prove to me that I am loved. I was screaming to the world, prove to me that I am unloved. I wasn't screaming to the world, prove to me something I don't believe. I was screaming, confirm what I know. I am unloved. I am unworthy. And I got what I was asking for. I didn't think that's what I was asking for, but I was. And you see, people can show up to try to prove to us that we're loved. And I don't do that so much for people anymore because when I see their unraveling, it's so beautiful because I've been there and I understand. I can give them love and compassion from a distance, a healthy, self-honoring distance for them and myself. Because we can show up to prove to people that they are loved over and over and over again. And it's like you can feed them that proof that they're loved and for a moment they are full. And then when that, that love passes through and digest, again, they are hungry. And it isn't until we are starving that we will change our diet and begin to feed ourselves rather than sit and wait for temporary nourishment. We will begin to nourish our own souls and we will stop yelling and screaming at the world, prove to me I am unloved. Kicking and screaming all the way. As I began to love myself and come to know how deeply loved I am by all of creation, people started to gravitate back towards me and we just shared love and it wasn't a needy love the love that I felt within myself was mirrored back to me so in any area of your life what is going on inside of us is what shows up outside of us right if I look at the state of the world today with climate change and and decide to stay there now that I've I really know deep within my soul that we are facing great changes on our planet that can be catastrophic to us all. I could stay there and I could cry and I could prophesize the end of times and, and I could wish for everybody who doesn't see it to be proven wrong, right? How, how often do we hang on to that? Oh yeah, well, they'll see that I was right. Yeah, please let me be wrong about this shit. <laughs> The truth is, I don't want to be right about it being catastrophic. I want to be right in my actions and in my being about doing my part to change it. Doing my part. And it's not about who does their part or doesn't. Because the minute I start to do my part and I go through the transformation of change and being the change I want to see, that's what I'm putting into the global consciousness. I'm putting the energy of change, of courageous, humble change into the world. I'm putting the energy of self-accountability into the world because I am the change. So every day can be a new day. We can acknowledge what is wrong and we can look for where in us we can change that because the world is a reflection of us. We change internally and we start to see changes externally. It's just the way it works. Yeah. And in the past, I used to become this activist who's going to fight the good fight. I know some of you can relate to that, right? It doesn't bring change. Me and my girl Margaret were just talking about that this morning, how we don't change the world by telling people they're wrong. We don't change the world with fear. We don't change the world with graphic, horrible images. We push people away. There is education to be had, and when people are ready, they will receive the education that you put out there, the evidence that is available. They'll receive it. They'll be ready and receptive. But they're more likely to be ready and receptive to somebody who comes in love, not in blame. Somebody who comes as an ally, not an enemy. 
Somebody who comes and says, look what I've changed when I realized my part in it all. And then somebody who comes with solutions. Solutions, right? Just me changing my diet and posting my beautiful, freaking nutritious, organic, rad recipes online and talking about the love that I share for all life on earth is implementing change. And it's implementing far more change than me staying stuck in a place pointing out who and what is wrong all day. And besides, who wants to live there? I don't. If we are facing catastrophic end of times, like, man, oh man, I'm going to use up every moment that we have now to be the change I want to see. Because that's the only way that we can change it. It's our individual changes. And in the meantime, I'll get to enjoy the life that I'm here to live until the day I'm not meant to live it anymore. And when that day comes, it will come, but I will have lived my life consciously. Consciously choosing love over fear. Consciously choosing to courageously change what in me was ill, what in me was false. And there's still much to change. It's an ongoing journey. Ongoing! Ah, uh, Katie, what is up, baby? I love you so much. So much. I miss you, man. So good to see y'all. What's today? Friday. Happy Friday, y'all. It is Friday and Mother's Day is coming. What a great, what a great time to celebrate being in joy for being the change I want to see to affect the world, the planet, and all life on her. Mother's Day. That's a good one. All right, you guys. I just wanted to let you know today is a new day. And I am excited to be the change that I want to see. And just wanted to share that with y'all. Because I love you. Bye, guys. Have a good day.